This is the 360 Smart Life G300H dash camera. Now don't get it confused with the old model. The old model was the G300. The 300H has a wider field of view, uh, higher resolution movies, built-in GPS, and so on. Now a week doesn't go by that I don't get requests from uh, dash camera manufacturers asking me to do reviews of their dash cameras. And I turn most of them down because just quite frankly, I just don't care. Um, but when this one came along, I was intrigued because I liked the design. And I'll be honest with you, I really, really, really like this dash camera. It's, it's just so good in so many ways. And if it wasn't for a couple of flaws, and one of them is kind of big, this would easily, easily by far be my top pick for sub $100 dash cameras. I'm going to talk about the issues that I have with it later, but first let me just point out some stuff that I do like. Um, starting with the design. It's just this nice bent L shape. It just looks elegant. It looks simple. It looks clean. That's the most important thing. So many dash cameras just have wires going everywhere and just, just bits and pieces and they just don't look attractive. This one's pretty clean. Um, on the top, got a micro SD card slot. It's got your USB power. On the side, it's got a power button that also acts as the menu button. It also acts as the incident button. So if you're driving and there's something you want to save to a permanent memory storage, press that button. Two up and down buttons for navigating the menu. On the side here also is an itty bitty little and very dim green LED, which just lets you know that it's on. I'm so happy about that because so many dash cameras have bright, annoying, blinking lights all over them. Even my Thinkware up here, Blinking lights all the time, and at night, blinking green light. Can't stand it. This thing's smart. It's just got one tiny super dim LED, and that's the way it ought to be. So, I like the overall design of this thing a lot. It's a 160 degree field of view, and there's pluses and there's minuses to that. And the minus is this. If I try to mount this camera where I wanted to, which is way up here, my Jeep's instrument cluster gets in the way the field of view on this is just too wide. It sees the instrument cluster and it blocks the view. So when I was testing this, I had to actually mount it quite a bit lower so that the actual lens was below the instrument cluster. That way it was out of the way. This wasn't as big a deal as I thought it might be originally because it ends up, um, the bulk of the body of this was still behind my mirror. I didn't really see it. My passenger could see it. And I did have to run the power cable quite a ways up to get up to the headliner up here. Um, but that's the only downside to having a really wide angle uh, dash camera. You just have to be careful where you place it because things do get in the way. Pluses and minus. Um, obviously the pluses you're going to see more, but because you're seeing more, that means that you have to have a higher resolution recording to see the details and all of that stuff, right? Um, 160 degrees is quite a bit more than the average of 130 to 140 in other dash cameras. Um, most other dash cameras record at just standard HD, 1080p. This one's higher resolution. It's higher than 2K. It's definitely not 4K. Um, it's actually 2304 by 1296. That's about 30% more overall resolution than standard 1080p. And it ends up that's actually plenty uh, to make up for the wide-angle lens. I'm able to see all the details and license plates and signs and things. So uh, overall, design, really, really good. So my first beef with the camera is how they chose to mount it to the windscreen. I've never seen anything quite like this before. Now, normally, they would just have a, a sticky pad. I mean, there is a sticky pad here, right? You'd think you'd just stick this right to the windshield. And you probably could. You might never get it off, but you could. Instead, the camera comes with two of these. These are little plastic um, pads. <laughs> That's really the best way to call it. And the idea is you peel off this back layer and this piece of plastic sticks to your windshield via electrostatic uh, forces, right? It's not technically an adhesive but it does stick and you can remove it and put it back on numerous times. And then the idea is that the dash camera then sticks onto this instead of sticking directly to your windshield. Now, theoretically, I'm assuming that so that you can 
take this off because if this sticks to glass, it's never coming off. If you stick it onto the plastic, it should peel off. Well, right before I started to make this video and I had to take my dash camera off, I ran into some problems. So I tried pulling the dash cam off of the windshield and uh, it took the entire plastic uh, thing with it, which defeats the purpose. And now I'm trying to remove this plastic film from the actual sticky pad and I'm having a hell of a time because um, it wants to take the sticky pad off of the camera. It's, it pulls and I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to destroy this. Um, I think the goal here was to be able to remove this safely and reattach it, but it just, there's no way. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of destroying the whole sticky mechanism and bending this plastic thing. There we go. So yeah, see, I've made a bit of a mess. Um, that's, <laughs> that's never going to go back on right. So I think, so as you can see, this is really a one use setup here and it kind of defeats the whole purpose of, you know, having this thing so complicated, it might as well have just been stuck on there in the first place. Most dash cameras use like a two piece system. Um, my Thinkware up here uses a two piece system. The idea is you have a small little plastic mount that permanently sticks to the windshield and then the dash camera itself clicks into that, right? So that way you can remove it quite easily. With this setup, you can't, but it's worse than that. With this setup, you've got this enormous piece of plastic stuck to your windshield and it's got all these instructions on it. The instructions that tell you what to do. The instructions stay on there. So when you have this huge piece of plastic stuck to your windshield, you've got all this text on it. You see that text. You especially see it from the outside of the car. From the outside of the car, you can see the plastic, you see the dotted line, you see the text. It's kind of a weird way to have done it. Now, you might be thinking, well, maybe you can just get some scissors out and trim this down. You know, just trim it down to the part you actually need to get the dash camera to stick to it. Well, the problem is because this thing sticks to the windshield not by, uh, you know, glue. It's just sticking there by electrostatic uh, adhesion. It needs to be this large. That's why this is so big. It needs the surface area in order to stay on there. If I were to trim it down, I don't think it would hold. Next up, I want to talk about the 360 app that you can use on your smartphone that connects to the dash camera. Now, this app is another one of the good points about the dash camera. It just works. It works well. I like it. I've got nothing bad to say about it. The dash camera has its own built-in Wi-Fi network. So when it's powered on, all you have to do on your phone is you just log into that Wi-Fi network, run the app, and you're ready to go. And I don't have my dash camera connected to the car right now, but as you can see, uh, I get a live view um, through the uh, camera. Um, it has a built-in tilt sensor, I thought, but I don't know what it does. This little button there, it doesn't seem to do anything, so I don't know what that does, but it said zero degrees, so I always assumed it was for adjusting the angle, uh, but apparently it doesn't do anything. You can go full screen on it as well, obviously. Um, when you go to settings, you have access to all of the settings on the camera. Obviously, you can record audio or turn that off. Vehicle speed and video. This will show or not show your speed. If you watch my other videos, you know I'm not a fan of having my speed recorded on my dash camera videos. It's, it's called evidence. Um, the one downside here is that the videos always show kilometers per hour um, there's no setting for switching it to miles. Um, also, the time is always military time. There's no way to switch it to, uh, you know, the regular uh, three in the afternoon kind of time. Now, here's something weird. So, okay, it's got parking mode. Parking mode works great on this because this camera has a battery backup. So you don't have to have a special parking cable for this. It just plugs in regular 12-volt cigarette lighter adapter when the power is shut off to the adapter because you've powered your car off, it knows and the battery in here will kick in and it will go into parking mode. Now parking mode with this camera is not a motion based one. So it's not going to record if somebody walks in front of your car. It's impact 
sensor detector type stuff, right? So if somebody bumps your car, there's a G-force sensor that will detect it. Then the camera will power up under battery power and record video. Now, I don't know how long that battery actually lasts. I've never had a need to actually know, um, but I think in regular parking mode, as long as it's not recording, it should last quite a long time because it doesn't take a lot of juice to run a, a, a G sensor. In the app, however, um, there is a way to set the uh, um, sensitivity of this. So you can set it to low, high, and off. This is, you know, uh, how hard of a hit you want your car to take before uh, it'll, it'll kick in. Also, there's this option that I don't know what it does. It says parking monitor, parking monitor, monitoring using cons. I don't know what that switch does. The instruction manual that comes with the dash camera is, is utterly useless. It really doesn't say anything about this. It says nothing about this option. So I have no idea what that says or what it is. Now it also down here, it has time-lapse video. There is no information in the manual what this is, how to do it. Um, I thought maybe it just automatically recorded time lapses, but as I'll show you in a minute, there's a time lapse uh, folder where it stores the time lapses, but there's nothing in there. And I've been using this dash camera for a week. Um, I've never found a way to turn time lapse video on. I don't know how you do it, um, but you can set it to off eight hours, 16 hours, and 24 hours. It defaulted to 16. That's where I've left it, and I'm not getting any time lapses. So I don't know what that does. All right, so we can drop back out to the main screen here. Now we can also go to album. Now what album will do, the dash camera says it's stopping recording and it will now show us a list of all of the recordings on the dash camera. Um, shows you by date, shows you by time, and it's great. You can just select one, plays back, all's well in the universe, pretty much as you'd expect. Um, we have up at the top looped video and a looped video is just your regular recording. So when the memory card fills up, it'll delete the oldest ones and just write over them. Um, emergency video, those are the incidences. So if you press the incident button on the camera itself or if it detects a hit, whether it's in parking mode or just driving, uh, those go in here. And then there's time-lapse mode, which I mentioned before, it says no videos. I have no idea how to make this camera record a time-lapse. So anyway, uh, those are those. You also have the ability, obviously, to uh, download the videos. Um, so you do this, and then there it goes. It starts downloading. It's slow, but I'll tell you, it's faster than some of the other dash cameras I've seen, um, where it takes forever to download a video to your phone. Um, obviously, you can alternately just pop the uh, SD card out and plug it into your computer, which is usually a much faster thing to do than trying to download from the app. Um, also, it has driving track. So if you go out, um, it'll actually, because this camera has a GPS in it, it tracks uh, everywhere you've been. So here's one little drive I did. It tells me start and end. It says I went 1.3 kilometers because it doesn't know miles. 11-minute um, drive. So that's nice that it does that. You can always look at where you've been. Um, and then obviously it has buttons for just starting a recording or taking a photo of those are kind of useless, but they're there. So anyway, the app itself, I'm quite happy with it. It just simply works and it works really, really well. All right. So let's finally take a look at some of the footage coming off of this dash camera. Now, right away, you can see there are problems. Something doesn't look right, right? It's really, really choppy. The frame rate is really, really low. Well, it ends up this is one of those issues that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Um, the issues that made this dash camera just, you know, just one little notch shy of being the perfect dash camera. Uh, the first issue I had was the way it connected to the windshield. And the second issue is this. It's the frame rate. There are problems. Now, I'm going to talk more about this in detail in a moment, but I want to try to stay positive. Let's talk about the good things about the video. First of all, the resolution is good. I can read license plates. I can read street signs. There's this one stretch of road right here that I like to use when I'm testing dash cameras because the power lines are a really good indicator of the quality of the video. It ends up on crappy dash cameras with poor video compression. These power lines will become all pixelated, blocked out, and uh, sometimes they just disappear. But on cameras like this, which have good video compression, the power lines stay intact. So that makes me happy. 
Um, overall, the video quality is really quite nice. You know, generally speaking, the exposure is good, the color is good, uh, the resolution is nice. It's a good quality image. The problem is still just the frame rate. Now, it also has night vision. Uh, the camera performs quite well at night, unlike most dash cameras that switch to a black and white mode at night. Uh, this has color night vision, so it tries to retain some color. So let's get back to the choppiness. Now, this camera, according to the specs, is supposed to record video at 25 frames per second. Now, 25 frames per second is already pretty low. Pretty much every other dash camera out there records at at least 30 frames per second. That's standard. Matter of fact, 25 frames per second isn't even a standard frame rate. 24 frames per second is standard uh, cinema film rate, and 30 frames per second is TV film rate. 25 doesn't exist. But that's what it's supposed to be recording at. And if you load one of these video files up in QuickTime Player and do the inspector on it, it says that, yes, this is a 25 frames per second video file. But if you step frame by frame through the video, you'll see that it's not because it'll go frame, frame, duplicate, frame, frame, duplicate, frame, frame, duplicate. In other words, one out of every three frames is a duplicate. That's why it stutters. That also means that the effective frame rate is actually 16 frames per second, not 25 frames per second. Now, I have a theory on why this is. Um, at first, I thought maybe it was my memory card. So I popped that card out, I put a different one in, same thing. Then I went online and I tried to find reviews of this dash camera to see if anybody else had this problem. It ends up I couldn't find any other reviews. I couldn't even find any English reviews of the old version. But I did find some foreign language reviews of the older version, the 1080p version. And in most of those videos, the footage from the dash camera was also stuttering. So apparently the old version had the same problem. My theory on this is that this dash camera uses what's known as the H.265 video codec. Well, a little bit of video history here. For the last couple of decades, H.264 was the standard video codec for HD uh, recordings. Well, H.265 had to come out because of 4K video. H.265 has the ability to compress the video files down to a little over half the size that you'd get with H.264, but it would retain the same image quality. The problem with H.265, though, is that it requires a tremendous amount of computational power to do that compression. Not so much with H.264. The new H.265 requires a huge amount of processing power, and I don't think that this dash camera has the processing power to do it. And that's why it skips frames. I think that's why they aimed for 25 frames per second. They thought maybe we can get 25 out of it. I think that that's all that the processor in this dash camera is capable of doing. It's all a matter of opinion here. If you guys think that 16 frames per second is acceptable, then hey, this is a fantastic dash camera. This dash camera is only 80 bucks on Amazon. And I have nothing else bad to say about it other than the way it mounts to the windshield, which is really not a huge deal. It's effectively perfect other than that. I mean, I love everything about it. I love the looks. I love the interface. I didn't even show you guys the menu system because there really wasn't any point. It's kind of the same as it is, or it's a stripped down version of what you get in the app. But the app is good. The image quality of the video is good. It's all great. It's just a matter of whether you can live with 16 frames per second. For me, I can't. I really would have to have a dash camera that's at least 30 frames per second. I don't even know if that's just because I just want 30 frames per second or if that really is necessary. If there's a car crash, you know, is 16 frames per second enough? Are you going to get all the information you need out of it? Maybe. I don't know. Either way, I do recommend this camera just because of how good the rest of it is. So if you can live with the frame rate, I'd say get it. Like I say, 80 bucks on Amazon, you can't go wrong. So let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching.